Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to have to step back in time a little bit. We're going to go back to the beginning of April. And one day, one morning that uh, in the first week of April, I came downstairs like I usually do and I threw open the blinds and looked out in my backyard and sure enough, my chipping sparrows had arrived for the spring. And I happened to notice that one chipping sparrow looked a little different and I didn't immediately think much of it because it was a plumage I had seen before, but then I got to thinking, well, this is a plumage I typically see in the fall. And I don't know if that's uh, an effect of the sheltering at home, but uh, normally I guess I don't pay that close of attention. And I'm not sure if I've ever had fall plumaged chipping sparrows in the springtime. So I had to take a closer look at this bird then, and I started thinking about things like clay colored sparrow and brewer sparrow. So we're gonna take a look at those three species today. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be talking about all things bird related. And as I mentioned, we'll be focusing on chipping sparrow, clay colored sparrow, and brewer sparrow today. So here's a chart that shows all three of those species showing up at Fermilab. And this is data that we've collected over the last 33 years. And you can see chipping sparrow usually arrives in the beginning of April. So mine were right on time. And they are with us through the entire breeding season and they start to thin out towards the end of uh, October, but we do have quite a few records still in November and even uh, bleeding over into December on occasion. Clay colored sparrow also starts showing up in April, more mid April, and they're with us through May. And then there will be certain situations or certain places within the county where they will stay to breed. We have had attempted breeding records at Fermilab but the most reliable place probably in the county to find them in the breeding season would be Springbrook, down in the southwest corner of the county. So they are with us sporadically through uh, the breeding season, and then we pick them up again in September through probably mid-October, on rare occasions a little later than that. Brewer Sparrow, there's probably uh, not very many records of that bird in the county. Uh, the only reliable one that I know of actually occurred at Fermilab and that was uh, in late May and that would have been in the survey period of 1997 through 2001. So I've not talked about these charts at all. I have referenced them a lot in our tutorials. So I'm, let me just take a minute here to tell you what how to read these. Um, each one of these bars of different color represent a five-year survey period within the whole survey. So the current survey period is supposed to run from 2017 through 2021. And as you can see, we've successfully recorded chipping sparrow in every single quarter of the month, all through this breeding season from start from the start of their uh, arrival in April, all the way through, all the way to the, through the end of November, in fact. If we look at this chart here, we see that clay colored sparrow is around for every quarter of the month starting in late April for us. Uh, but then we have a gap here. And what that gap represents actually is missing that bird for five years. Since our survey period isn't over yet, we've only missed it from 2017 until 2020. But that's significant in that it's not just one year that we missed the bird. We, are un we have been unable to find that bird for four years in a row in that quarter of the month. And again, Brewer Sparrow, we just have that one record. So here are our chipping sparrows. And this is uh, the image that I typically expect to see in the springtime. This is a, an adult male plumage or adult plumage. And you can see it has a very strong white supercilium. It has a black eye line, which runs completely through the eye. The crown is all very rufous. You can see the beginning of a median crown stripe here, and that's white. And it doesn't go all the way through the entire crown. It's actually just in the fore crown, and there it ends abruptly, and then the rest of the crown is all rufous. So if I look at this bird that uh, is a representative of what I just saw in my backyard, this is more of what you would expect a chipping sparrow to look like in the fall. And you can see that the crown is now brownish. You can see there are fine streaks through that crown, and you can see there's just a uh, a dusting or an impression of a median crown stripe here. Hardly visible, but it is there. You can see that the facial pattern hasn't really changed all that much. We still have this bold supercilium. It's now more of a grayish brown. Uh, we still have the black eye line. 
We still have the ear coverage more or less grayish in color, and we have a little stronger uh, mallard stripe here than what we were seeing on the breeding bird, but otherwise the bird looks pretty much the same. So here are our three candidates that we want to discuss. Once again, the chipping sparrow, and I just went over that and talked about the various features in the head pattern here. And if we compare that then to clay-colored sparrow, we see the, the patterning is more or less the same. We once again have a brownish crown. This is maybe a little sandier brown color. Uh, we have heavier streaking in the crown, and there is a median crown stripe that is white and quite visible here. The facial pattern is very similar. We do have a, a old supercilium again. This one's kind of buffy. Uh, we do have an eye line, but it's only behind the eye. If you look in front of the eye where the lower is, you'll see that there's no dark line there. So that color is the same as maybe the ear covers. And um, so it's a little different look than what we see in that chipping sparrow. The ear covers are in fact uh, surrounded by a dark line. And you'll see that uh, enhanced here in the mustachial stripe and then you see a diffused mallard stripe as well. So all that going on, very, very similar to what we have represented here. Uh, here's our third bird. This is the Brewer Sparrow. And again, same patterning, a brown crown. Uh, more streaking, more dark streaking in that crown. There's kind of a light area here, um, but not really, it's not really a median crown stripe. It's just a little paler in that area, but not very much. Uh, the facial pattern again, very, very similar. Uh, we've got an eye line going through here. This area here looks a little darkish, but it's really just no darker than what we have in the ear coverts. It's certainly not a dark line like what we see here. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the facial pattern is very, very similar. So looking at just the head, we would, we would have some difficulty in separating these three species out. So let's take a closer look at all three of them. Right, back to our chipping sparrow. Here's a close-up of the, of the uh, fall plumage. And you can see, again, the brown in the crown. And you can see that those streaks are fairly fine. And Here's that dusting of a, a median crown stripe that I was talking about. The eye line is still intact. We have these grayish um, ear coverts, and we have just a bare, barely hint of a uh, mustachial stripe and, and barely a hint of a mallard stripe. If we look at this bird over here at you know greater distance, you'll see that you see you still see all those features. They're pretty easily picked out. Um, the reason for this image is so that you can see a key feature, and that is the lower back and the, um, the rump and the upper tail coverage. And you can see all of that is very gray. So that's a key indicator for this species. If uh, all else fails, you can look at that. It's just very difficult to see at times because uh, the birds do like to, at rest, cover this area with their wings. I was fortunate with the bird that I had in my backyard that I'm looking out the dining room window and it was below me and he turned his back to me and I could very easily see that it was all very, very gray. So I felt pretty confident in my identification at that point. So we're now moving on to clay colored sparrow and you can still see all those same features that we were talking about uh, earlier. Um, again, a brown, a sandy brown crown. Now the streaks are much heavier. You can see that those are much more bold than what we were just seeing on that chipping sparrow. You can see that the median crown stripe is definitely white, very, very strong, very, very noticeable. We do still have the large supercilium. Uh, this one's slightly more buffy than, than what we were seeing on the chipping sparrow. You can see those ear coverts, which are kind of a brownish gray, are outlined in a darker brown. And again, forming a um, mustachial stripe here, and then the mallard stripe is fairly well defined as well. And what's interesting is that you have this very white throat, you have this very white submustachial area, and so you get this white, dark, white, dark patterning, which is very bold in this case and uh, very noticeable for this bird. So uh, again, looking now at a more distant bird, you can still see all those features. They're all reliably seen. You do see the strong mustachial and mallard and the white, dark, white, dark patterning here. Uh, you can see that the eye line is only behind the eye. So all the key things that you need to see, you can still see here. And then looking at the um, rump and upper tail coverage, you can see that these are now more sandy brown. Uh, try not to look at these primaries that are kind of covering here. Just kind of focus on this area here and you see really a, a lot of sandy brown. You get down here and you can see that there's a, uh, a dark line through the central part of that feather. But overall, the uh, feather is, is a sandy brown.
So that would be a key feature for us to focus in on. So our third species is brewers. And you see all that same patterning going on again. You have this brownish crown. You have all its fine streaks, uh, a little finer than what we were just seeing on the clay colored sparrow. And there is a slight impression of um, median crown stripe here, but it's really just that it's kind of slightly lighter. It's still in all the brown hues. And you don't really get the feel of a um, median crown stripe like you do on the, the other two species. Again, a strong supercilium, and you do have an eye line. However, it is only behind the eye. The front of the eye is plain again and more or less the same color as our ear coverts. The ear coverts are surrounded by a darker line, and you can see that uh, it forms this mustachial stripe. It's a little more um, diffused than what we saw on the clay colored. Likewise, the malar stripe is not as well defined. So similar features, uh, just a little more subtle than what we were looking at earlier. If we look at the uh, more distant bird, you can still see all those features quite well. And then when we get down and look at the uh, rump and upper tail covers, once again, we're in actually more of a brownish color here. Uh, this bird's in a little fresher plumage and there still are some nice feather edges on some of these uh, feathers on the, on the uh, lower back. And so those are actually edged with some gray on them. So this can be a little deceiving, and so that requires looking a little closer. But you'll find that if you get right down in here, you'll see that the feathers are actually brownish. And again, a central area of this feather is very dark, um, but overall the um, feather is brown. And it's a little darker brown than what we were seeing on the clay colored. So here's a chart that kind of outlines all those features that I've been discussing. And if you'd like to print this off for uh, further reference in, uh, in the future or in the field, you can at this point in time hit your print screen button on your computer and then you'll have a copy of that. So um, it's a good idea to study this uh, beforehand. Uh, just like I kind of was caught off guard a little bit, I was expecting shipping sparrows. And then I had to think twice about things like clay colored and, and brewers really was not on my radar. It was, um, it was a while before all of a sudden that idea popped into my head and I wasn't prepared to make that distinction. So um, it's always a good idea to know all the birds that uh, you have a potential for. That way when you do see birds in the field and you have an image of, in your mind, um, that whole idea of that species might click more readily. So uh, definitely worth studying this chart very carefully. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.